Hey folks, I'm Lady, and this is First 15, where I'm bringing the first 15 minutes of the latest games released on Xbox Game Pass. Today, we're playing Airborne Kingdom. It's a sky-based city builder where you journey across a number of procedurally generated maps to build your kingdoms. It was published by Freedom Games, who seem to publish a decent variety of small titles, and it was developed by The Wandering Band, an indie studio based in wherever, because they didn't see fit to have an About Us section on their website. Now, I love city builders, despite them being an addictive time sink in a world where time is so precious, but I've never played one where you build cities in the sky, so this first look should be fun. Playtime is about seven hours plus. I'll link to the game in the box. Let's get started. In a bygone age, a kingdom existed like no other. This kingdom did not anchor its power. This kingdom took to the skies. The Airborne Kingdom traveled to every kingdom on the ground, sharing knowledge, culture, and tradition. Its great council guided the lands through a golden age. Yet, long before even our elders can remember, kingdom vanished. The people sought to continue their harmony, but self-interest began to overrule. As it does. The land's three regions slowly isolated. Trade, travel, connections all unwound. kingdoms contracted, and small settlements nearby were nearly wiped away. Is that steak in the upper right? Bygone times turned to legend. But in the tapestry, we found instructions. A blueprint to remake the technology of the ancients. A prophecy to restore the airborne kingdom. Got it. There was but one belief we had wrong that day, though it proved vital. For such a finding was no chance at all. Hmm. Nice intro. All our painstaking efforts have succeeded. Our home flies. Yet, this is only the beginning. To truly rebuild the ancient's visions, we need to find every kingdom upon the lands and befriend them as common allies. We also need inhabitants to form our great council in this new empire. Okay. We should start with the kingdom of Rut... Rutula? Ruta, uh, the kingdom of Arugula, uh, not far from us, and the only kingdom we know. But first, we must build houses and find supplies. All right, let's do it. I can't use my controller for this, but that's fine. So I get to see all the stats up here. Let's hit pause. So my travelers right now have 16 workers. They're all satisfied. And I have nine inhabitants who don't have a home. Okay, and they're also idle. I've got 27 food storage. Uh, 14 water. F what does that mean, 430? Does that mean out of 30? Is that what that means? 20 weight for buildings with ability to carry 40 total. No tilt issues. Oh, that's interesting. So you actually can't just build as if you were building a city on the ground. It actually is going to take the fact that you're levitated like into account. Interesting. Then you have speed. Because of the drag on our buildings, we can only move at 76% of our fastest possible speed. And I can add propulsion buildings to increase that. One town center giving 76, okay. Then we uh, have coal, which powers the central fan. Um, then we've got like just regular things to build. So, you know, wood, adobe, iron, and then resource storage. What do you mean dump resources? 
Resources can be sold to the closest kingdom, though dumping is a more immediate option to alleviate some storage. Dumping should be used as a last resort. Oh, so I'm literally gonna like just dump it off the side. Okay, well, let's get started. So let's see, how do I move? Okay. I mean, it's not really telling me how to do things. So I'm just guessing based on the fact that I'm a gamer, I'm just guessing what controls what. So holding right click on the mouse, it gives me like the orbital camera. Can I zoom in and out? Yes, I can with the middle wheel. So let's take a little look. Let's see, whoa, God. And then yeah, I can use WAST to zoom in and out as well or to strafe right and left. Okay, and then let's see what I can see about these people. It's Punker Roten. Votar Ashni and Votar Musar. Are you mad that you got the same name? All right, so let's have them going. Animation's a little rough. What I need it to do is actually tutorialize me though. Like, how do I click out of this? Oh, you can lock the camera. Is that locking it on him? Try building some housing blocks for your house. Okay, so let's start there. Let's pause for a second and let's go into the build menu here. Housing blocks uh, provide shelter for one inhabitant. Each block is clumped together with its nearest neighbors to form a two by two house and it costs five wood. All right. Oh my God, the camera uh, sensitivity. So you can rotate it or change it. So why would I want to change it? Is it like different styles or maybe put this entrance not connected to pass? Oh, this is not really the best tutorial, I gotta say. Okay, you know what? Let's try to build some, can I build a path? Let's do this instead. Walkable structures act both as road and support. Buildings must be attached to the town center. So let's do this first. Okay, still no tilt issues, which is great. I want to try to maintain some symmetry here. So I'm just going to build it out the same amount on all sides. Okay, they do have to build it first. There we go. Okay. Sorry, little guys. I wasn't 100% sure what to do. Okay. No tilt issues. Now, how many people did it say didn't have a home? Eight, right? Oh, okay, I don't have any more wood. We reach these resources with a hangar building, so I have to make a hangar. Once I have one, left click on the nearby forest. Okay. And again, like it's not that it doesn't have a tutorial, it's that to me, really good tutorials have a certain flow and this does not have that. All right, so let's build a hangar. We'll build it over here. Okay. Thanks guys. Thanks for really going at it. You look very enthusiastic about your job. Now that I have this built, it contains seven aircraft. So does that mean that I can send seven people? Nearby forest, nearby forest. Is this a forest? Click. 32 remaining, about two per trip. Assign workers to collect it. So plus insufficient aircraft. Okay, I thought it said I had seven. No, that's fine. Okay. Six. Is there a button to center? Like to look? Is it this? Yes. Okay. I was going to say if it's missing that. <laughs> All right. Let's look at him go. Look at him go. Like collecting the resources. Whoop. Now look at that. This one's showing off now. Just get back in a hangar. <laughs> okay. All right, and now they're ca oh my God. Construction on a flying platform is hard. Yeah, especially when the camera is all over the place. Beyond basic storage, okay, I have to research. Okay, create an academy and start researching Adobe Kiln. All right. Also, why are there like balloons? And there's water, which I figure we're gonna need that as a resource. This is probably iron. Yeah, I know some inhabitants don't have homes. I'm trying to address that, but you need to just give me a moment. How many didn't have homes? Only four have houses. All right, 
six. Great. So now we just need three more. I mean, I kind of like the art style because I feel like when it gets more like intricate, it'll be more attractive. <laughs> also, is this the city they were talking about? The Tapestry Ruin. An unremarkable ruin is half covered in sand, similar to the hundreds scattered across the barrens. And yet, within its walls, we find the prophecy that we hope can change the fate of an empire. For at the beginning of this legend, the Tapestry Ruin was still unmarked and unknown. And yet, through the course of our story, it would become the genesis of myth. Okay, so can I do anything with that? Alright, build up your houses, my little guys. And then we have to... Uh get more of this going. There they go! Let me look at the map. The prophecy scrawled on the tapestry is clear. We can only achieve prosperity by remaking the Airborne Kingdom. So right now I've got 9 out of 150 people. I have none of my allies. And so we basically have to refill this tapestry. And then whatever I find, I guess, will present itself on this map. But it did say I think there will be multiple maps. So maybe once I, you know, found everything on this one and built up my kingdom as much as I need to here, then I'll be able to switch to another map. I like the fact that this looks like beautiful, like Middle Eastern tile. That's very attractive. All right, it'll regrow with time. Now, here's my other question. What is with the numbers here? Like, is that zero because I depleted it? Like, meaning, like, see how there's a 34 there? So is it saying there's 34 iron? There's 44 water? Who knows? Who knows? But let's go. I'm warming up to the game. The controls bother me, but I'm warming up to the way the game looks. Like, I think this is pretty... Let's go ahead and build the academy. Because, again, I need 30. That there. Get to work. Get to work, my little buddies. Ooh. Nice. All right. For the research tree. Now, construction cost 15, research in two hours. Okay. Um, now, can I only research one thing at a time? Let's see, if I try to click on something else, will it let me increase research speed? Okay, so it does tell me. Perfect. Ah. In the meantime, let's head out over here. All right, yeah, I do think the number does represent how many resources are there. That's also neat because you can get a very quick overview of whether or not it's even worth it to go to a resource point. Like, I wanna see what this is. Unknown settlement. Recruiting more people. For your kingdom to thrive, all right, I have to get more people from the settlements. If I keep everyone happy, like right now it looks like they're kind of jubilant, then people will be more likely to join. Got it. But that says it's too far. How do I move my thing? And also I do like the day-night cycle. Like, this is gorgeous. Oh, and you can actually see stars. Ah, nice. Researched. Building placement. Well, hold on a second. Let's look at this first. My people don't enjoy living next to certain buildings because they're uppity. They're indicated with a red radius when I place them. All right. And I can also move any building by selecting it and clicking the move icon. Great. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to have all the housing kind of be on this side. Because I want to put, like, the kiln and stuff over here. Okay. But in the meantime, let's research something else. Coal storage. Possible speed. I mean, let's research the food thing because <laughs> I feel like that's going to be a problem. So, no wonders found. Then we've got basics. We've got resources. So we got the kiln. Things for storage. We can get a food silo, warehouse, or water tower. And then these are other things that I can research eventually. With each building you construct, drag is added and slows me down. To get it back up, I have to create propulsion. I'll continually use uh, resources like coal, food, and water. The faster I travel, the less time it takes to get places and the fewer resources you'll use along the way. Oh, customized motifs. Summer. 
Spooky. Festive. Oh, I don't like that. You know, I'll leave it at the default for now. What? What just happened? What, what did I just do? What am I doing here? Why are all the workers busy? What are they doing? Eight workers in the building. Oh, and then there's one on the Oasis. Okay. So is this me deciding where to go? Because it didn't really tell me about movement. Anyway, hovering your mouse along the top bar will show information. I get it. All right. So where am I going to get more Adobe? I guess that just tells it where to go. Huh. So let's find some Adobe then. And where was the settlement? Because I need to recruit more people. Where was the settlement I found? I will say, you know, while I do think a keyboard and mouse is perfectly fine. For example, I've been playing The Wandering Village and I play that with my controller and that has a lot of moving parts, a lot to control. Very similar UI, obviously, um, because you're building and maintaining and managing a village. And I don't feel like I lose anything at all by using a controller because of how intelligently they mapped it. So I would like to see controller support implemented here. But for now, let's see. We approach a hovel in the edge of nowhere. Some settlers may wish to join us to leave the land's toil behind. Okay. Let's recruit. A few of the settlers seem intrigued by our vision, but they want assurance that they're leaving for a happier home. Okay. The sun-caked faces were as hard as leather. Most workers ignored our presence and continued their thankless tasks. Oh. At least mediocre inhabitants. Okay, so I get to see what each person wants. Well, they're excited to join. They're excited to join. And they're excited to join. Great. Wonderful. I've got three more people. Let's send one out to get this. There's Clay. We'll send two people out to get that. All right. We're making some progress. A relic ruin. Ooh. All right. Well, when they get back, I'll send one. Or better yet, I'll do that and send one now. Go check that out. See what goodies they've got. Rare items. Oh, so I don't actually get to see them. They just exist there. Okay. Housing block upgraded. Nice. Stacks up to two stories. Let's go ahead and research that. And now I should have one extra person. Let's get some more food out of this thicket. Oh, this is a pretty good place for resources. We got coal over here. Oh, and I do like the music. Oh, there's the kingdom of Arugula. So we are heading in that direction, but let's collect all the things we need to collect. See what it looks like when you interact with the kingdom and try to get them on your side. Okay, so the town center is giving me 40 lift, so the weight of the building is actually one to one. Oh, perfect. So let's go research some lift buildings here. Oh, I guess I can't. Wait, what is this? Oh, no. Let's go this way. There's an unknown ruin. Check this out. Fluorescent ponds. A number of small ponds glow with strange colors next to a small abandoned settlement. The walls of the buildings are dyed in a similar color to the waters. Oh, yeah, that's very pretty. The source of the pigment is a mystery, but it appears we can change the colors of our own buildings with these new dyes. Nice. Okay. Building motifs. Yeah, I get that. That's not as important as figuring out how to play the freaking game. So <laughs> then I can worry about customizing later. Now, so I can speed this up. So let's just do that. It is now in the fastest speed, and that's likely the speed I will always play on. Ah, look at how beautiful it is in Golden Hour. Send some workers to get more water. Okay. 
And uh, we can stop right here. Because now we're close enough. Kingdom of Rutula. To fulfill the prophecy, we must have Rut allied with us. Our machines all the crowds and give us audience with the queen. We may also seek ancient blueprints that we can combine with our own knowledge to make wondrous technology. Our maiden arrival was more dire than we expected, for their kingdom was further in ruin than our rumors had ever told. Oh, this is interesting because it says excerpt of the first flutters, right? It's like I'm reading the chronicling of what we're doing now. Um, all right. So can I only do one of these? No merchants offer a fair price, but if we're desperate, we can trade at a loss. Well, no, I'm not desperate. We search for blueprints. We must pay to have them excavated and to work in the sky. We must research what we find further, but these should be a start. Oh, perfect. Purchase for three, purchase for two. Helps keep us aloft. Don't I already have this researched? All right. Fine. Then, let's check out the quest. They seek our assistance for an important task. The queen tells that the great conservatory is in ruin. If only we could find the resources and lend some of our workforce to its reconstruction. Okay, so they want us to help them rebuild. Completing it's the first step to gaining their trust and eventually reconnecting to them once more. Okay, so I have to send them two workers for one hour and 10 wood. Well, I don't have 10 wood, but don't worry guys, I am on it. Get out of the oasis. All right, I want all hands on this. Kingdoms and allegiances. Yeah, ally with all 12 kingdoms. So that's the thing. I think that there are going to be 12 maps total, again, procedurally generated. And I suppose that each one of them is going to have a single kingdom that you have to kind of go around and build and then eventually ally with. All right, so we've got the kingdom there. And, oh, good, it puts the quest on the side. So I'll know when I'm done with that. I can go back in. Now, the reason I chose the fan was because when I went into the research tree, there wasn't anything under lift to research. So I figured it's because I needed a blueprint. And sure enough, sure enough, now I can research this. Because lift is getting a little dangerously close to the max, as in it's one away from it. So <laughs> I want to make sure we get that out of the way. Also, I think I've already got enough wood to help them rebuild. Yeah, there's four idle. Perfect. Okay. Go ahead and rebuild. We give the required materials and workers to reconstruct the Great Conservatory. We must wait nearby for its completion. No problem. I've got two workers idle. I'm go get some water. Okay, go top us off with that. Because, yeah, now I can store 55. I really wish that said of instead of for, because when I read that at first, when it said like, whatever, 23, 4, 55 or something, I thought it was saying like 455 people, meaning like it was almost enough to feed that many. But no, that's just like the max that you can store. With our resources and labor, the conservatory is again whole upon seeing our efforts. A couple of locals join our cause, agreeing to take part in the Great Council. Nice. Yet the Great Conservatory is still withered, its grove rotted. The Queen also asked us to find a sapling from the golden trees of Kal Daur to replant their once bountiful gardens. The exact whereabouts of the trees is unknown, but their rumored location is marked on our map. Okay, great. Perfect. We shall find the grove for you, milady. But this is really what I wanted to show at least for this first look. I wanted to show, you know, the basic mechanics, the UI, and if there was anything like quests, I wanted to show that. And of course, I wanted to show what the interaction is going to be like with the kingdom, since that is like the core objective of this game. So I think you've seen the fundamentals. We don't really need to go any deeper into this, which means that that was the first 15 of Airborne Kingdom. If you like what you see, you can play it right now on Game Pass. And if you like this series, please like the video and show your support. I'll see you back here soon with another Game Pass release. Until then, thanks so much for watching and happy gaming.